We now turn our attention to frequency domain equalization and also the training for equalization. The 802.11a OFDM preamble is shown over here and of course we're very familiar with this diagram. Uh, here are the short symbols that are repeated. There are 16 samples long at 20 megahertz. Of interest to us are the long symbols T1 and T2 are, which are exact copies of each other. We have a 32 sample guard interval. During the acquisition phase we, we achieve after packet detection coarse and then fine timing synchronization. So we actually need to be able to predict exactly almost exactly where the symbols T1 and T2 begin. Typically due to multipath fading channels there will be an ambiguity so instead of doing timing offset estimation where we exactly achieve timing offset synchronization at this point we may actually achieve timing synchronization at a point into the guard interval but due to the cyclic nature of the FFT it does not cause a degradation because during equalization that amounts to a fixed timing offset that would be eliminated during the equalization because it's just like a phase or term in the frequency domain so the equalizer would compensate for that. So you have a window where you might have an ambiguity in the timing synchronization and you're still okay. Of course, if you could synchronize at this point, then uh, it would be much better. After timing synchronization, we know where T1 begins and we know where T2 begins. And T1 and T2 are both used in estimating the channel and equalizing the received carriers. Here we will examine the actual long training sequence. The long training sequence is derived by taking the inverse Fourier transform of the following sequence. Note that the magnitude is always 1 or minus 1, and the imaginary part is set to 0. Also, we have a 0 at DC, and we have nulls in the guard intervals in the frequency domain. Here we show the actual forward FFT of the long symbol indicating that the magnitude is equal to 1 and also the nulls at the guard intervals in the frequency domain. So the long symbol has a constant magnitude which is what we need in order to do channel equalization. Here we show the actual time domain sequences for the long symbol, the real part and the imaginary part and because the imaginary part in the frequency domain was zero. We observe symmetry about the 30-second sample over here on the real part and anti-symmetry in the imaginary part. If we compute the magnitude of the long symbol, we see that it's symmetrical about the 30-second sample, which is to be expected. And you can use this sequence here to actually identify the long, long symbol. Here we indicate how we will achieve equalization by actually using zero forcing on a per carrier basis. So the first operation is to extract the long training symbols after timing synchronization. Since we have two long symbols we can actually average them in the time domain in order to reduce the effects of noise. Then we perform an input 64 point FFT in our case and we obtain the carriers. This is a very interesting plot. We have the actual carriers which indicate the multipath fading channel and we have deep fades at certain carrier positions. As you can see the uh, RMS delay spread was 150 nanosecond in this case. After we estimate the channel, so the, the actual estimate of the channel frequency response at each carrier, we perform a complex inversion and store the results. Then we take the incoming OFDM symbols, remove the cyclic prefix, perform an endpoint FFT, and here we have the unequalized carriers, and this plot shows the constellation prior to equalization. We multiply times the inverse of the estimated channel, and we obtain the equalized carriers, and here we're showing the constellation uh, after equalization. If we look at the zero forcing equalizer on a per carrier basis, we need to perform this complex inversion of the estimated channel on a per carrier basis and this of course requires some hardware to do this. Uh, if you're interested you can uh, consult this article here to find a way to avoid the inversion but at 54 megabits per second you might need to do some more work in order to meet your performance requirements.
This paper also shows a smoothing algorithm applied to the estimated channel frequency response. Here is the original channel and here is the actual estimated channel and you see that in low SNR situations the estimated channel is not smooth whereas the original channel is smooth and using that fact a smooth channel is obtained and you can actually improve the overall performance by by smoothing the estimated channel frequency response. Of course this only applies when the signal noise ratio is low.